quick business matters lawfully exempted from open meeting to which this certification applies and only such business matters as were identified in the motion concerning the closed meeting were heard, discussed, considered. Of motion. So moved. Motion, Mr. Edwards. Second from Mr. Johnson. Roll call. Yes. Bailey. Yes. 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 At this time, we're going to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and have a moment of silence. <laughs> Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <coughs> Mr. Nichols. Thank you very much, Mr. Sturdivant, members of the board. Tonight we have quite a few, as you can see, quite a few recognitions that we want to make our way through because we are very proud of these students and all of the wonderful activities that they've been involved in and, and uh, done a wonderful job with. So I'm going to ask Dr. Scales if he would come up and lead us through the recognitions to begin with. Good evening, this is Mr. Chair and school board members. So glad to be here once again tonight. And we're also we're so glad to recognize so many students here in, for Mecklenburg County Public Schools. First, I'm going to start off in the list. I'm going in the order in which it is on the uh, school board meeting agenda. First, I'm going to bring up the students, the four students that, rep that will be rep well, that represent us at the uh, Destina Destination Imagination uh, National t uh, Tour at Kansas City, Missouri. Can I have the Destination Imagination team to come up at this time? Come on. If I could have the coaches come up as well, that would be great. You want to come up here to the microphone, dear? All right. All right. You want to tell us about what you how, what you learned this year from from the Destination Imagination team. Thank you. Um, Destination Imagination is a program that um, helps kids to think outside of the box, literally in both ways, <laughs> and um, it helps us with teamwork and problem solving. I think it was a really great experience mm -hmm. that we got to have and I think that it just opens minds and lets our creativity show. And what I've written down is that this, this group of four students comprise of uh, Nolan Bowen, Slate George, Aliza Hatcher, Addison Thorpe, and three new members who are Kate Griffin, Oliva Griffin, and Gage uh, Jones. They first uh, made first place at the Southwest Regional this year. They represented the state of Virginia at the national event in Kansas City, Missouri, and they ended up finishing number 23, 23rd in the, in the nation out of 74 teams. So congratulations and thank you, Ms. Chumney and Ms. Height, for your hard work and dedication with these students. Thank you very much. And y'all can take some pictures. And parents, if you'd like to take some pictures, you can come up at this time. Hold on, y'all. Y'all stay right there and take some pictures right over there. <laughs> Once again, Destination Imagination students from Mecklenburg Schools. Uh, 
Next, we're going to be recognizing the FBLA students. The students are members of the Future Business Leaders of America. They'll be heading to the National Conference here in, in a couple of weeks. Could I have Ms. Patton, Ms. Davis, and Ms. Perrier, along with their three students who will be representing Mecklenburg County Schools at the National Convention in a few weeks? You want to talk about it? <laughs> I'm going to have Ms. Patton have a few words about their wonderful experience coming. So greetings. Uh, I'm real proud of our FBLA members. Uh, Ryan Little was absent tonight. He's actually part of Boys State and I believe that's going on this week. Um, but all three of these members was actually their first time being in FBLA and so I'm just very proud of them. I'm very excited for the opportunity that they have coming up. We'll be heading out to San Antonio next week and um, just a great opportunity for them to see the world a little bit. Um, along with all those networking skills uh, that's just so important in the business world. So thank you guys for the opportunity. Ms. Davis, would you like to say anything? Okay. <laughs> Y'all can go over to the side and take your pictures. Paris, you can come up at this time. Once again, the FBLA students from Mecklenburg County Schools. <laughs> Next, it was about the Rubik's Cube Challenge. If I could have Ms. Sykes and her team members from Parkview Middle School to come forward at this time. Come on up, son. And I'll speak briefly about this because this was, this was kind of interesting. Region 8 was uh, coming come in the high school and middle school complex. They had asked the uh, region to send, get, just get teams together. So I sent the email out to our principals, and, and uh, they went through all throughout the uh, region. And uh, I know Parkview jumped on it very quickly. But when they went to the tournament, and I got the text message that basically they just won everything. <laughs> They just, I mean, and I felt bad for Cumberland because Cumberland hosted it. And, and Cumberland, well, reason I'm from Cumberland, so I live in Cumberland, so that's why I'm saying this. Anyhow, Parkview Middle School, I'm proud of y'all for uh, taking it to Cumberland. <laughs> and I'm going to have you say a few words about y'all's awesome accomplishment. Uh, so there were, there were challenges for group teams where we solved a certain amount of cubes and whoever could do them in the fastest, whichever team could do it in the fastest amount of time. And there were solos, so whoever could solve like the normal one, and there's a smaller one called a two by two, where it's like two by two, kind of, um, instead of the normal three by three. And so our team, we got first in the group three by three, and we got first in the group two by two. And Tyler Sykes got first in the solo two by two, uh, I got first in the solo three by three, and David got second in the solo three by three. Was that it? Okay. And so, yeah, <laughs> we kind of, yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> The last point I'll make is this, is that they, uh, they have encouraged a young man in the back back there. He's there back there. He's back in the back. He's doing a U Rubik's cube, cube with his eyes closed. So y'all have really trained him very well. So again, once again, the Rubik's Cube team, you can take your pictures at this time. Perhaps you can come up and take your photos. And I might, I might add that um, Mr. Cook was not able to be here for recognition a couple of months ago when we had the art recognitions. His was first in the region for the VSBA art competition at middle school. Uh, beautiful picture that I'm looking forward to us getting back. So Cumberland won't be calling you anymore, Dr. Scales. I'm being nice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being real nice. 
Once again, the Rubik's Cube team from Mecklenburg County Schools. <laughs> this year we had a state qualifying soccer member from Bluestone High School, if she could come forward at this time. I'm moving you up. <laughs> and the reason I'm moving her up the agenda is because she actually has another event that's going on at the, time, at the same time where she's receiving a scholarship. So I'm trying to get her so she has an opportunity to um, leave for that in a timely manner. So Ann Taylor Williamson earned her, herself a uh, place on the second team of the 2A All-State soccer team for Virginia High School League. You can give her a hand, please. Yeah. You want to speak? Um, okay. <laughs> I will tell you this. She is going to Virginia Tech right now. Even even as a freshman, we were just talking back there. Uh, she's looking forward to going there to being an um, awesome Hokie. I might see her on campus some. And, again, she also was talking about possibly even walking on, on the soccer team at some point, which would be an awesome feat for us to have a student from our school division going into the soccer team at, at Virginia Tech. So, once again, Ann Taylor Williamson. Now I'm going to recognize our track recognitions, first starting with Bluestone High School. We had three gentlemen to go. If I could have Neil Clayton and Frank Sorber to come forward at this time. Well, if they're not here, the, thing, the, the biggest thing with them is they both qualified for all state. There were three young men that went to um, the state qualifying meet at uh, East Rockingham County, East Rockingham High School up, in, up near Harrisonburg. They did very, very well. Um, both of them placed within the top six in the state, which is awesome. Um, so, and, and, and also for both of them, both of them have gotten state recognitions in several sports this year. So they've done a wonderful job representing our school division very well. And I'll make sure to get these two their uh, principals to get for their recognition. So give them a hand one more time for Neil Clayton and Frank Silver. Another great group of students from the track and field, field at this point is the, the Parkview High School track team. Could all the, track, the Parkview uh, track team members please come forward at this time? These are a part of the members of the uh, Parkview track team that made it to the state championships this year for the 3A and 4A, which was held at Liberty University for May 31st and June, 30, June 1st. Four of these students actually made all state, uh, all the all state team. And at this time, I'm going to turn it over to the coach to talk about their wonderful season that they've had over this year. So come on down, coach. Mm -hmm. uh, can I say Bill? I wasn't nervous, but now I am. Um, <laughs> uh, let's see. I, I, I want to recognize all the kids that made it. It was A.J. Bracey. He made it in high jump. Kevin Taylor, which is right there. Kevin raised his hand. He made it in high jump. Then we had Rayshawn Coates. He made it in high jump. And we had Anthony Joyner. He made it in shot put. Um, we had uh, Nakia Shabina. She made it in high jump. Um, we have Lakaya Clement. She made it in shot put. Wave. <laughs> Uh, we had Shamaya Williams, she made it in shot put. Uh, we had my baby, Najee Talley, she made it in this. And uh, we had Kamani McCarthy, he made a long jump. My 4x1 team, um, TJ House, he also made it in long jump. Uh, let's see, Seda McCarthy, he made it in 100 meters and a 4x1. And we got Quajamir Tisdale, he made it in a 4x1 relay team. Did I say it right? You got a long name. <laughs> and then. Uh, <laughs> All right, but um, I can go on and on. I'm going to try to make this short about our track team. Um, I started seven years ago at track. I'm sorry. Um, my coaches are Coach Mike Herring. He's not here. He couldn't make it tonight. And then we have 
Coach Tally. She's the brains of the operation. <laughs> uh, I just like training, so I let her, she just takes care of all the paperwork and talk to people and takes all the stuff that I might mess up. She takes care of that. She's very good at that. But um, overall, I started seven years ago, and since I've started, I've been blessed to um, make it to state seven years in a row with our track team. Are you going to, I'm too much? Okay. All right. Um, overall, I want to thank, um, like I said, we started off with no equipment. We had a dirt track. We had no high jump pit. We had we didn't have anything. So basically, I took tillers out there with dirt, did whatever we had to do just to make it happen. And, but thank God for the booster, booster club at our school and Coach Green, our AD, they got, it, got us the equipment that we needed. We raised the money, did what we had to do. <laughs> and like I said, the kids have been flourishing. I'm proud of every single one of them. Um, some of them have been trying for four years to make it a state in their senior year. They made it. So it's, it's a very big accomplishment. And this is history to me because it's the first time we ever got recognized for it. So I thank everyone here for recognizing us. I mean, it's, it's a really big deal, especially for me. Thank you, sir. Yeah, I'd just like to add to what Sean said. I've said this to many people in the community and, and everybody I talk to. He's carried seven, eight, 10, 11 people to state a lot of years. And it'd be, uh, there's no telling what he could do if he had some, uh, a real track with some real equipment. But uh, he and Yolanda and the coaches in the past have done a great job with these uh, track people. We've, we've represented our county at the state tournament uh, every year. So congratulations to him again on another year, uh, good year. Y'all can go to the side and take your pictures, and any family members can take pictures at this time. Once again, the Parkview track team for this year. Thank you. In softball and baseball for our county, we had uh, three schools to be represented at the state level in softball and baseball. For softball, first one represent, would like to recognize the Blue Stone softball team who made it to the quarterfinals in softball for this year, because those players that made it, please come forward at this time. <laughs> the team had an awesome year this year, and they had a wonderful 12 and 10 record, and they beat Randolph Henry in the region, 16 to four, and they also beat Maggie Walker Governor School 24 to 20, 23 to three, but lost in the quarterfinals to Nottaway. So again, they they did a, had an awesome job this year with several young ladies making all district, um, several making all region, and also all and and the, we, we're finding out today whether any of them made all state. So again, we appreciate Caitlin coming in with her mom and represent, representing this uh, Bluestone softball team. So again, thank you. And I'll give you a certificate, and we'll go ahead and have you take your photos and get your certificate. Give her another round of applause for Caitlin. Thank you very much once again, Caitlin, and for Bluestone Softball. <laughs> the Parkview High School softball team also made it to the state uh, level of softball for 3A. Could I have the softball team for Parkview High School please come up at this particular time? <laughs> you can come on up, coach. You can talk. You can talk about your team better than I can. So. 
But they've also, I had a chance to see them practice several days. They are a very, very good squad, and I'm very impressed and so glad that y'all were able to get as far as in there. I know y'all continue to work on going to another level for next year. So I'm going to turn it over to Coach at this time. I didn't prepare anything, but first of all, I can start with thanking the school board for um, inviting us to come and and uh, highlight the girls and their accomplishments this year. Uh, this is my eighth season coaching at Parkview, and I've been very fortunate to have a really good group of girls every year, and this group was no different. Uh, we had six graduating seniors this year, and I think that towards the end, that kind of that kind of put us over the hump. Uh, the girls went through a lot of adversity this year with some injuries and some other issues. Uh, but they did really well gelling. We had to move some girls around, so they did really well uh, adjusting to that. We uh, highlights of the season: we were first in the Tri Rivers district, uh, runner-up in the 3A region, and finished in the state quarterfinals. I believe, if you want to get technical, a tie for fifth. So, <laughs> tie for fifth in 3A. We did have three all district, first team all district girls. Uh, I think four second team all district three first team all region and my goodness I could go on and on do you have my roster I turned in because I, I will forget somebody <laughs> I did want to call their names oh yeah thank you sir okay playing shortstop this year first was Carson Wall pitching Emma Wolf Grayson Hudson playing first Alyssa Berman playing third Kaylee Coker in center field Lizzie Wesson pitching in first base Skylar Williams right field Madison Ezel catching, uh, Aaron Bailey playing second, D.D. Clyburn playing left field, Blair Clark catching, and Elizabeth Powell in, in right field. Um, I would like to uh, say a special thank you to our coaches, uh, Coach David Brinkley and Coach Hannah Hayes. They did a wonderful job this year. And I could go on and on talking about my girls. I, I just, I, I love being around them, and this was a good group. And they represented Parkview and the county well everywhere they went. So I'm really proud of them for that. Thank you for y'all's time. Y'all can go ahead and take your pictures to this right? Any parents who'd like to take photos can come up at this time. Thank you, Lady Dragons, for representing us so well. <laughs> the last sports accolade I'll be doing will be for the Parkview baseball team, who also did very well and made it to the state level of 3A baseball. So if I could have the members of the uh, Dragons baseball team to come forward along with Coach Green, come on up at this time. Come on up, Coach Green. You got all the words tonight, so go ahead. I'm going to let Coach talk about it. He just gave me some more news, good news today. Okay. Um, first of all, thank you, school board, for uh, recognizing us. As you can see, we only have three of us here. we got um, five or six of them out of town. A couple of them went at Boys State. Uh, a couple of them on vacation. So uh, we had a great year, no doubt about that. Uh, we were 14-0, uh, won the district. Uh, region runner-up and ended up uh, making it to the quarterfinals of the of the state 22 and 3 was our record that's most most wins that the, the school's ever had so this group of kids did a did an excellent job <laughs> I want to thank, want to thank uh, our administration uh, Ms. Swain and Coach Green and Coach Sharon as our assistants uh, but this was a, a great group of kids you know, let's we'll check on them in in ten or twelve years and see what kind of a job we really did with them if, uh, <laughs> if they graduate and uh, become good uh, good parents, good fathers, and uh, good husbands, and have a good job. Then we know we did something good with them. That <laughs> so, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Y'all go to the side, take a piece, and let's coach Green at something. <laughs> oh, go ahead, guys. Yo. Oh, go ahead. I agree with everything Mike said. 
Uh, I'm just going to brag a little bit before we finish up the sports. Parkview High School this year had probably one of the best seasons from beginning to end that I can remember in a long time. Uh, I think we had five teams win district titles. We had, uh, I think, five teams. Y'all help me, guys. Five teams go to state. Uh, been, been a while since we had this, this kind of success. So I want to thank you know, uh, the coaches, uh, Ms. Swain and, and the administration for their support and all the, the wonderful uh, ladies and gentlemen we had to, uh, to coach. It was a pleasure to be, uh, be an athletic director with this kind of program going on. And I just, uh, like I said, want to brag a little bit before we leave tonight. <laughs> To mention we did today. I had the state meeting today, and Justin Hudson and uh, Cameron Sheets were first team all state for, yeah. for us. Yeah. Very good. Mm -hmm. very good. Thank you very much, gentlemen. I would. Uh, before we go to the Community Empowerment Award, which is not related specifically to students, I think it might be a good time, as is our custom, to ask all of the students who have been recognized tonight to sort of make their way around from the wall to wall so that the board members can have a chance to, to recognize you and, and thank you and uh, show you their appreciation individually. So if all students would come up, starting over there and sort of walk, walk their way through this little U. At this time, we're going to go ahead and recognize the VCE, which is the Virginia Cooperative Extension Community Empowerment Award, which is given to our local 4-H agent, which is Ms. Jennifer Bowen. So Ms. Jennifer Bowen and your game changers, can y'all please come up at this time along with the collaborators that have assisted them as well. So come on up at this time. Give them a round. Y'all can just face forward. You want to go ahead and talk? Mm -hmm. This is your time. <laughs> All right. Thank you all so much. Every year, Virginia Cooperative Extension sponsors programming awards based on work done during the previous calendar year. And this year, we were very honored to receive both the Central District Award and the State Award in the Community Empowerment category. And our entry was entitled, Developing 21st Century Skills by Enabling Teens to Teach. And this was for the work that we did through um, the Tech Change Makers program that's funded by Microsoft and administered by the National 4-H Council. And the nice thing about this award is it also allows us to recognize our community partners. So also named in this award are Gary Cyphers with Mecklenburg County Public Schools, Dr. Michael Schall, who is a professor at Virginia Tech who developed the video game design program that we use called Game Change in Ear. Jennifer D. Pascali, who's the account manager with National 4-H Council that administers this program, and Jeremy Satterfield, who's here with us tonight from Microsoft. Um, so this team just finished up their summer day camp that they did at SVCC. Um, they had a full house, taught Game Change Engineer for three days there. Um, they also worked with our SHEET program after school this year. They offered a six-session coding and computer science club. Um, several of them are going to teach Game Change in Ear at 4-H camp coming up at the end of July, and two of them are going to travel to D.C. for our Citizenship Washington Focus. Um, after that, we'll start planning for year three, which is the final year that we know of, of this Tech Change Makers grant. So I'm really proud, proud of this group. They put a lot of time into this program, and they're all busy kids, and I realize that there's other things that they could be doing. So I really appreciate their commitment to this, and I want to thank the, the board and the school system for supporting this program and all of our 4-H programs. Thank you. You can go to the side so you can take your picture. And thank you, I, uh, Jeremy. Uh, Jeremy, you might, I think that the board members would be interested in seeing the plaque. It has the names of uh, others, including Mr. Cyphers, for the work that was done in yours. Um, this was started several years ago, a couple of years ago, when we got the call that uh, Microsoft was looking at the county for the grant. 
and we're so glad to have a chance to have been a part of that for the last two years. It's been great for our students and others in Mecklenburg. So thank you very much for your ongoing support of our students in this way, thank both you. to Microsoft and to 4-H. And I failed to name my students. I'm sorry, guys. This is Drew Cherry, Sophie Crowder, J.D. Ramon, Michael Blythe, Owen Dean, Mackenzie Bowen, and Caitlin Campbell. And it was just too crowded before, but if you all will stay still, I know the board wants to congratulate you too as well. We obviously have had a full year of lots of awards. We're very thankful for the hard work that our staff is doing with our students and the recognition that they're getting for all the hard work. Um, we're very, very pleased to be able to recognize these students tonight. Um, there are the students that because of the summer could not be with us tonight, but they will be getting their certifications and notified of the recognition. So good job for 2000. 18 and 19 and we'll be looking forward to another good year next year moving on then if you are okay with that to my report and information items uh, mr dalton would like to come up and give a presentation about surplus good evening superintendent nichols mr chairman board members uh, on your uh, board docs there's several different Surplus items that we've asked to be deemed surplus and as it's stated as an action item tonight Parkview High School has several TVs VCRs uh, TV carts uh, Bluestone band Bluestone middle and Bluestone high school would like several instruments deemed a surplus and Technology also has numerous uh, Computers old iPads that are also up for surplus and myself. I have two lifts Two Wheeltronic 9,000 pound auto lifts that we would also like to declare to surplus. Is there any questions or any of those items? Questions, board members? Ms. Bailey? I have one. Yes, ma'am. Um, Mr. Dalton, it, I don't know if Ms. Hatcher's here or not. The, there were several Chromebooks listed as surplus. Were yes, ma'am. Are these Chromebooks that we purchased when the lease ran out? Or they were actually purchased prior to the lease. Is that correct? Right, and th they've reached the age where. They just no longer be able to be updated or support our virus protection. So, but we don't buy them. We just lease them now, correct? No, we do a little bit of both. We lease and we buy. Okay. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Mr. Dahl. Thank you. Also, um, item C on the agenda, uh, the BS, VPSA is an annual bond that is, the state puts out for purchase of technology. Uh, this is one that we bring to your attention every year and uh, there again we'll be putting that out and so next month we will be asking for your approval uh, for that in a year if there are any questions about that but it's an annual issue that we have for being able to help with our technology um, looking at the student handbook and code of conduct updates I believe again Dr. Scales is going to be addressing that issue Uh, good afternoon, good evening once again. Um, 
We had proposed earlier this year, as far as the new consolidated handbook, which also incorporates our code of conduct. But we also have, we're almost at a point now where we're about finished, but we do want to uh, bring before you a uh, possible option that we would like to try to move forward, but we also want y'all to consider it at, as, at this time. Um, again, discipline-wise, we, we've got it where, with the, from the retreat, we're looking at finishing up, consolidating, make sure that there's a balance of with discipline among the schools. But one of the things we're looking at trying to do is trying to look at possibly making a change at the high schools for a little bit of time for cell phones at certain times within the day, such as before school, after school, and during lunch. And but there, but there again, what we're seeing in more and more schools throughout the state is that they've got areas where there's signage that if, that students cannot use phones to try to offset some of the pieces where you know try, to try to work with students to try to get them to be have more control and work better with phones so it's not constantly every time you come out it, again you've got them to give them some time with the phone usage but not unlimited time because that that's where the disruptions and things can lead and again it's, it, it, it that's why I wanted y'all to get a chance to get some consideration on it but it's not definite but, it, but it's what I want you, we want y'all to consider it, that that might be an option just for the high schools. And that middle schools would be remain unchanged that they could not have access to the phones at all. Any questions? Board members? Is that part of this um, that we're voting on tonight? As far as the... Um, it's in this handbook. Okay. Now as you want to table it, um, I mean, are we, are, are we meeting again on the 25th? We're meeting on the twenty fifth, and we can if, if, it's if you there, want to table it. If it's there tonight, we can we can move forward with it. Um, you know, it's not an action. It's not on the I think we're looking for it to be a vote on the twenty fifth. Okay, right, this is just for you up for, for you all to consider. Right, it's for information. It, it's because there are only the only only other things that will be added onto the document. There will be some appendix appendices that will be added that are that are covering school board policies that need to be added so parents can have that information for the for the, for the uh, handbook. Of it. Other than that, uh, mm -hmm. the, the book is pretty much ready to go. Dr. Scales, I think it's a good idea. Um, oftentimes, with the world we live in today, parents are constantly communicating with their children if they have an actual time in which they can do it. Um, it just makes it better for them other than having to go to the bathroom and look at it or look at it in the class. Uh, we know they're using the phones, the, the devices, and if you work with them and you have designated times and locations, I think that'll be a win-win uh, for both sides. And as a board, we can, you have a chance to discuss it and we can talk about it and, and vote on it the 25th. Well, the, right. the purpose of the meeting on the 25th is specifically to give the board a chance for a work session. With the information that we're giving you all tonight on a number of areas, the data that you see, one of the things that we noticed as we had our administrative retreat was that when you look at discipline, and discipline is an area that we're going to be held accountable for now, which we have not been held accountable by the state before, and we have to look for plans to move forward. Um, cell phone usage is one of the areas with our current policy that is at the very top or the second highest disciplinary issues. And we're worked with our administrators on how do we, how do we solve this problem? Right. And m many of the administrators came to the uh, um, opinion, and of course it has to come back to you, that rather than just say, no cell phones, and if you get caught with one, you're gonna get disciplined, let's talk about ways to uh, work with the students and teach them what is the appropriate use of cell phones. When is it appropriate, when is it not appropriate? Because they're gonna have to deal with that in the business world when they get out there. So that's now being reflected in the update to the handbook, and we wanted to bring it to your attention for you all to have a conversation about it. Right. That was going to be one of my questions, whether or not you had uh, approached the administrators and discussed that and, and then bring that opinion to us, because we don't want to overstep them, because um, they're going to be the ones that are in the buildings with them, yet and still we want to work with them. And yes, sir. We've, we've been in conversation, um, especially at the high school level, um, again, if you if when when you get a chance to review the data, um, it's almost over over a third of the referrals for the schools for the high schools were for cell phones, and uh, you know it, we, we again it's it's a, it's a give and take. It really truly is a give and take situation. But 
right now to go from nothing, nothing from, from no time at all where they can't have the phones, but it's still going to have it because there are some, I've, and there are some articles and things I would love to go over with you all, but you know, where again, it's, it's, a, it's a security piece of parents, and there, there are times when parents are texting their child just on basic stuff, but kid pulls the phone out, then they're in trouble. Yeah, it, it, it's got a give and take. There's, there's some bad times and good times. But what I'm looking at right now and what, we, what the administrators have talked about, especially on the high school end, is that right now uh, before school, during lunch, and after school, we'll give them about an hour of cell phone time that we should, that, that will give them an opportunity to use the phones uninhibited during those time periods. Any other comments, board members? If not, we'll have a chance to talk thank about you. more at the work session. Other than that, um, once this is concluded, the, um, the, the consolidated handbook will be ready to go, uh, be ready to go get printed after July 1st. Thank you, Dr. Scales. Thank you. And the, uh, Dr. Scales, I think we also have the Title II final application corrected in Title IV. Do you have any comments you want to make on that? Uh, with, the, with the Title II and Title IV, especially with Title IV, Title IV was the one that had left blank that time. The state, um, after speaking to Ms. Anderson, uh, told me to go ahead and put in the funds, the funding source amount from last, from the previous year. So that's what I've done. So that's been upgraded. Uh, and Title, and the Title II uh, funding, I just had, um, Title IV, excuse me, I had to make an adjustment too because I had left out a uh, figure that had given too much too much funding to the private schools. Once I made that adjustment, then um, everything else fell into place. So it, it was just more um, numerical changes that had to be done. Other than that, the uh, grants for for the school division are ready to go for July 1st. And this is an item that will be voted on tonight if there are questions that come up. Just for clarity, the federal grant programs do have funding that goes to the private schools and we have to follow those formulas in putting it together so that was an update thank you okay thank you thank you okay um, as was mentioned by dr. scales about the handbook um, we do have a significant amount of data that's come in at the end of the year that's when so much of the data comes in from the SOL results from uh, discipline reports that we have, uh, results of other uh, certifications, testing that students take. Uh, we compiled uh, all of that data as it's been coming in and I've given to you a handout with uh, the data as we've been looking at it as a school division. Um, we had three days at the beginning of last week when the administrators all came together and went through the data significantly. and. Um, the charge for the administrative retreat this year was specifically related to the fact that we have been talking about Mecklenburg County and our movement towards the new expectations of the state for the profile of a Virginia graduate and how we make it our own. Uh, and there is a significant amount of professional development that needs to be done as we, as we move to that which we have been speaking about. There's also a significant amount of, of oversight and um, consideration given to this data and the direction that we see that from the data we want to be able to make improvements because Virginia too is now in a growth model. Our accreditation is not simply based on SOL results and subcategories, although we've listed that information in the data for you to be able to look at. Um, but it's different because now it is a growth model there are some baselines from the past for our county that have been identified by the state and they look to see if we can identify for our future the direction that we want to go and set those goals and continue to move in that direction. So in the past year we spent a considerable amount of time each month talking about what a growth model is and how we apply the growth model to our our teachers to evaluation to teacher lesson plans to uh, accountability components that we have um, and so the professional development that has been planned includes such things as teachers from each of the schools that will be participating in uh, a class that's specifically related to integrating the five C's that the state is looking for now into our curriculum and then the appropriate components to go along with that so what we started three 
days ago, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of last week, will continue throughout the summer. And it's a, it's a heavy lift. It's a, been a lot of work and a lot of planning, and we will be moving forward with it. Um, I mentioned it to you as a board. We talked about the accreditation component in a pretty significantly long session. And of course, the board came back with the recommendation that rather than just present information at the board meetings, we have a chance for a work session where you get the data, you have a chance to talk with us about the components that you have questions about, and then we look at that and, and have that significant conversation and make the, take the appropriate action. So I sent you the request to look at Jan June 25th as a time that we would have a, work, a special called work session meeting. And um, I got an approval from the majority of the board to be able to set that night as the date for this. It also would coincide with the final budget appropriations that we will have for the year, which we have to, we have to do anyway. Um, we've got m most of those coming out tonight, but there's still a few other payments that will need to be made by uh, our staff. So we'll be doing that on the 25th. We'll be looking at some of the, some of the personnel agenda that we yet to have taken care of before the new year starts on July 1 that we weren't able to complete tonight and then we'll be having this work session to have a discussion about these items. Of course, between now and the 25th, uh, you as individual members have the opportunity to look at that, give us a call, ask questions, talk about the direction that we're moving and make your recommendations for oversight for the board. So this is, I think, the best way for us to look at this information and the data is there. I've got a copy on line for you to look at, but we've also printed out a copy because some of you may find it easier to look at it in that way. Um, but that's the predominant part. Um, I do want to look or uh, have a conversation with you tonight as well about the um, secondary school project that we have going on. Um, right now, as far as progress being made, uh, we have had several conversations with the uh, engineers about the grave site that's on board. You might have noticed there's been a public notice in the paper about the grave site and members of the family having a chance to weigh in. I have heard from uh, two persons that are members of the family and I have heard from a church that's open to having the graves moved there because they have family members there. I will be meeting with some of those family members tomorrow there to have follow-up conversation and keep you updated on that part. Uh, you're also aware that uh, the, the company Skanska was chosen as the one that's going to be doing the building oversight. And we have a representative tonight from Skanska that would like to have a chance to introduce himself to you and talk about their progress and what their plans are in moving forward. So if you would come up uh, and introduce yourself to the board. Um, we have agreed as we've met that as uh, we get the bids out and uh, I've also in your package given you a letter from, from Mr. Upton that indicates the revised schedule. Uh, look, we're anticipating that the bidding for the uh, uh, contractors will go out July 17th. And at that point, then we'll have significant com interaction with Skanska and with the Mr. Upton uh, and uh, his associates. Um, and looking at a September uh, time frame for the groundbreaking, which we're all looking forward to. And then moving forward, hopefully with weather and um, the appropriate budgetary result response from the builders to be able to move forward on schedule. So far we are on schedule. Uh, so you have the, the newest update on the uh, agenda or the time schedule and we'll hear from Skanska. Great, good evening everyone. Uh, my name is Curtis Helswick. I'm a senior vice president with Skanska. And uh, before I go into our, our first update, uh, I want to say we appreciate the opportunity to be your construction manager and your eyes and ears on the project moving forward. Uh, Mr. Nichols gave a, a really good update and stole a little bit of my thunder, but I'll uh, <laughs> dive in with some of the blanks. Um, our first priority and, and only being involved for a couple weeks is to uh, get up to speed on the project and, and jump in. And so we've met with school administration. We've met with the architects. Uh, to, to do that and uh, we know they're making good progress in finishing the design up by early July uh, I understand they're going to advertise in the papers on Sunday July 14th have the documents ready that week for contractors to uh, look at and start preparing their bids 
um, we're looking at an August 15th bid opening date uh, and that allows us to actually have the bid opening right before your August uh, school board meeting on August 19th. So if we will bring some good news at that meeting to allow us to move forward. Uh, I think we're targeting to start construction probably the second week in September, uh, the week of the 10th I believe it is, so that you can uh, occupy the building in the uh, fall of 2021. Uh, some other things that uh, we're working on uh, right now starting this week is obtain, helping with procuring a materials testing special inspectors firm that will be involved in construction. So we're helping with that. We'll have those proposals back in two or three weeks. Uh, we'll hold on to them until, of course, we know we have good bids uh, to move forward with that. And the other thing we're working with the design team on is making sure we have all the paperwork and all the permits and, and approvals in place for all the utility work uh, that's got to take place, make sure that we got all the easements in place. So we're working diligently to make sure all those uh, are not going to hinder the start of construction. So uh, that's pretty much our brief update for this meeting, unless you have any questions for me. Board, any questions? None? I have a comment. Uh, I just want to say I think uh, as a county, as a school board, we've made the right move to hire a, a construction management firm to help us build this school and to move us forward in the right direction so we don't have mistakes that have been made in the past years. I've been here a long time and I went through the last construction project and I just feel really good about this company and, and their expertise and I just wanna say we should feel comfortable with it and we're gonna have a good product in the end. It's my understanding that you'll have at least two persons on site every day of construction. Correct, full time. Yep. We, I will be with a team here meeting with representatives weekly on updates and when construction begins, they will be bringing reports to the board every month. So as we project into the next two years of focus, uh, this past year our focus was on finalizing the, uh, the architectural work and getting the pay scales updated for our teachers. Our next two years will be building the very best school for our school division, and that's going to take a lot of time and a lot of effort. Right. But we are looking forward to working with your company as well as Upton and Associates on it. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Take care. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. And, uh, Mr. Chairman, that's my so comments for the evening. Okay. We'll continue on the committee reports. Um, part of this we just went over, but Joint Education, Capital Improvement Committee. We just had it. Okay, Finance Committee. Uh, the Finance Committee met this afternoon at 5 o'clock. We went over the, payment, the, pay, the bills, and uh, there were no questions, so we will recommend payment. Thank you. In addition, there is a note uh, about the food uh, opportunities for our elementary schools that we want to make the board aware of. So if you would share with the board that information as well. Good evening, Mr. Chairperson. Good evening. Members, Mr. Nichols. Um, I'm assuming you're CEP. CEP yes. Uh, we have the opportunities to uh, advance our CEP to all four elementary schools. There is a risk we have to determine whether we take this risk or if we just stay with the one school. Um, to do all four elementary schools, we have to increase participation in breakfast and lunch by 16%. We did this at Chase City. We, over, we even went over the 16%. If we do not hit the 16% increase in breakfast meals and lunch meals, then um, we will owe we will come short in federal revenue about $10,000 each month. Now, it could be that we hit 10% and only come short a couple thousand or 5,000. It all depends on how much we can increase our meal intake. I think we have the room to increase up to the 16%, if not more. For example, South Hill Elementary, we have 267 students eating breakfast. There's over 700 students in the school. Um, we just wanted your thoughts on whether we take that risk or whether we just continue with Chase City as our CEP school. And to be sure everybody understands, being a CPE school means that uh, we have enough students that qualify for free and reduced lunch that they will have the whole school 
be considered available for free and reduced price lunch. There's no more of this at the elementary school going through the process of applications and determining who everybody different ones are. It, worked, it has worked very well at J City Elementary School for this year. We've had a lot of headaches about trying to go back and get people to pay when they didn't have it through the year. Um, we had a significant discussion with the finance committee. This is not something that the board needs to vote on. I, I can tell you it would be my recommendation that we move forward with that. But it was a thought uh, among the members of the finance committee that at the, again, at the 20, meeting on the 25th, that you ask, have a chance to ask any questions, give us your thought, and perhaps even vote your support or lack of support for that as we move forward. This, this does mean all students receive free breakfast and free lunch. And we do have the revenue in surplus to cover whatever we do not make in revenue. And if it is a huge amount, we can drop out of CEP for the next, for the next school year. We do not have to continue for three years. Um, okay, Ms. Bailey? Just for clarification, uh, what does CEP stand for? <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, Robin. Community. <laughs> I just told Sharon that, and I could not remember it off the top. Participation. And so the 16 percent is that just a number that they come up with? That it's a number you put in a spreadsheet mm -hmm. that we have to increase meals a certain percentage to make CEP viable. Mm -hmm. And if we increase by 16 percent, then um, each, it makes it viable. School. We come out even with our revenue at each school. Overall. 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 Yeah. So it could be that South Hill Elementary could cover them all. Yes, if they if they serve, uh, right. they really only need to increase by 43 breakfasts. Right. Lacrosse has to increase by 22. But because that's our largest. But school, if South Hill decides to feed right. everybody for breakfast, we, we're covered. No pressure, Mickey. <laughs> <laughs> And if you go over the 16 percent, then you're just going to have surplus funds. Yes, we just money. have surplus revenue. So. Any other questions, comments, board members? Great idea. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Didn't mean to put you on the spot, <laughs> Ms. Peffer. Okay, we're going to continue on. School Safety Committee report. Uh, Mr. Chairman, we haven't had a meeting for a couple of months. It was one a few weeks ago I was unable to attend because I, I was at work. But I have been talking to the school resource officers, uh, you know, getting their ideas and opinions of what they would like to see. So. I'm trying to get a little bit of information from them and of course I know in the next year, two years, we're going to probably be having a whole lot of conversation about the security. It's sad that you got to have that, but uh, security of the school is an important thing. Well, as you mentioned that, I, I do need to talk with you about a meeting on the 11th that we would like to set for the sa safety committee to meet along with the sheriff's office and others. July the 11th. 11th. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Item B, Gifted Talent Special Education Committee. It's no update. Thank you. E, CT Career and Technical Education Committee. I don't believe there's anybody here for that either. Okay. Athletics Committee. No Let me just, yeah, can I mention one thing? Sure. Mr. Richard, go ahead. Uh, just to, to head this off, we, we have the, under the uh, action items, we have new school mascot. And I was wondering, when did you want to have the discussion on that? Because it's at, at the it's, time it comes up for, for so action. We'll discuss we will have a discussion. Time. Yes. Any other comment on athletics committee? Move on to G, instructional committee. Uh, Mr. Chairman, the instructional committee, we've not had a meeting. But I did want to bring up, um, at last month's meeting, we um, passed some policy regarding uh, when a uh, personnel receive a master's or doctorate degree that we go ahead and implement that uh, pay increase at the time that they and don't have to wait a whole contract year to do that and um, it was brought to my attention that in our policy it says a verified master's or doctoral degree in education and that's not really what we do the master's or doctorate can also be in the content area so I'm thinking that we probably should make another change to that policy to reflect that. Are you referring to the VSB policy? Uh, our policy. Our policy. Online. Yes, sir. Because when we vote it, we didn't specify. So you're right. We need to spec just go general yes. versus we, specific. Uh, in the content.
content that you're teaching. I mean, I, I mean, if you're teaching math and you have a master's in, I don't know, history, I don't know that we would want to do that. But I mean, again, that's something that we need to discuss as a board and make our policy match what we're actually doing. That'll be a good thing we can discuss at our 25th uh, workshop. And have it ready for a vote in July. Yes. Thank we you. will do that. Thank you, Ms. Bailey. Moving on to action items. Oh, public input. Madam Clerk, do we have anyone for public input? No? Moving on. Action. Uh, get a motion that the school board approves the minutes of the regular school board meeting held on May 20th, 2019. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Roll call. Mr. Yes. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Edwards? Yes. Mr. Yes. Good question. School board approves the minutes of the special meeting held on May 23rd, 2019. So moved. We have a motion? Second. We have a second. Any discussion? Roll call. Mr. Ritchie? Abstain. Mr. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Palmer? Abstain. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Item C, payment of the bills. Finance committee recommends we pay the bills. Roll call. Mr. Ritchie? Yes. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Palmer? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Yes. Yes. Get a motion school board approves the personnel recommendations. There are a motion. So moved. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Roll call. Mr. Yes. Mr. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Palmer? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Item E. The school board supports the discipline hearing recommendation regarding student matter SD 2018-2019-14 to assign a student to the Alternative Learning Center for the 2019-2020 fall semester. We have a motion. Second. And a second. There's some discussion. There was no hearing. Because recommendation. It, the discussion was, Ms. Bailey brought up, there was no hearing. But based on the recommendation of the superintendent, we're going to continue with that. Any other discussion? Roll call. Mr. Ritchie? Yes. Ms. Bailey? No. Mr. Palmer? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Edwards? Yes. Yes. Get a motion that the school board approves adding conduct grades for elementary schools. Do we have a motion? So moved. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Discussion. Any discussion? You refresh my memory on that one. <laughs> Mr. Nichols. We had a request <clears throat> from the as we were looking at the teacher morale issues, there was a concern that in this day and time when we're being held accountable for discipline and for attendance and so many other things, that at the elementary level there are, there's nothing but currently but grades for academic components that is being used to determine if a student is on honor roll or not. So the recommendation has been and the request has been that we look at changing the policy so that conduct grades at elementary school. So this is on the principals supported y yes. elementary school. Okay. Any other discussion? If not, roll call. Mr. Ritchie? Yes. Mr. Uh, Mrs. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Palmer? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Edwards? Yes. Mr. Yes. Item G. The school board approves the federal application for Title I, two, three, four, and 5. With motion. So moved. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second. Any discussion? Yes. 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 That the school board approves the local plan for the education of the gifted. Do we have a motion? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Mr. Sturman, I'd like to point out to the board that typically this is a five-year plan, um, but this particular plan is only for two years. And that's specifically because our instruction on the secondary level will look much different in two years when everything is consolidated. 
So that plan will need to be revisited in two years. Just wanted to make the board aware of that. Okay. Thank you. Any other discussion? If not, roll call. Mr. Rosen? Yes. 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 Johnson? Yes. Mr. Yes. 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 Next item, that school board approves a comprehensive plan. Do we have a motion? So moved. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. So moved. We have a second. Any discussion? Roll call. Mr. Ritchie? Yes. 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 Um, Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Edwards? Yes. Mr. Starkey? Yes. Next segment, school board approves the revised SAF manual. So moved. We have a motion. Do we have a second? A second. And we have a second. Any discussion? If not, roll call. Mr. Ritchie? Yes. Mr. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. 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 Next item, the school board approves the Lake Fest bus request. Do you have a motion? Motion to approve. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. And we have a second. Any discussion? If none, roll call. Mr. Ritchie? Yes. Mr. Bell? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Everett? Yes. Mr. Yes. Next item, the school board approves the listed items as surplus. So moved. We have a motion. Do we have a second? And we have a second. Discussion? None. Roll call. Yes. 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 Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Yes. Next segment, school board deems the listed textbooks a surplus. Do we have a motion? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? None. Roll call. Mr. Ritchie? Yes. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Yes. Yes. Next segment, school board approves Mr. Nichols. Um, the name is the new mascot. According to the last survey that we did, which gave the public an opportunity to look at the two finalists from the earlier, which was the Phoenix and the um, Maver Mavericks, and then have the opportunity to come through and make recommendations for any new names that they deemed would be more appropriate and vote there. Um, the Mavericks came out on top, a okay. significant number. Uh, we did have some other names that were brought to the attention well, for the board to consider. Before you get there, we have a discussion on it. Right now, the school board approves Maverick as a new school mascot. We have a motion? Then we can go into discussion. I have uh, I we got to get into the motion in a second, then we'll have a discussion, then we'll decide to vote up or down. We have a motion. We have a second. We have a second. Now we can have discussion, Mr. Rich. <laughs> What's a Maverick? Uh, well, Mr. Rich, it's a basketball team in Dallas. Bart and Brett. Bart and Brett. I've been watching on TV. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I'm speaking. I don't. I'm not officially speaking for Miss Garner, but I saw an email from Miss Garner who had the same concern about. Yeah, I really think that we need, and maybe our June 25th meeting is the time. To, to have a little work session for the board to discuss not only the mascot but the colors. Uh, we, we really haven't had any opportunity to discuss that and it, it bothers me because if people don't like it it's going to be our fault so I want to at least have some discussion about it and it, it would be nice maybe like I said the June 25th meeting where we could all just we, we've I know that uh, Mr. Edwards has mentioned hearing from the public about things and other people have mentioned hearing from the public and we would that would give us a forum to share all that and uh, I know Ms. Garner had asked that we not be in a hurry to do it either and I know there's some issues with the architect but I don't think they should supersede getting this right uh, so that's my issue I would prefer that we postpone it until we can have a work session uh, to include the mascot and might as well discuss the school colors at the same time because I know there's some will, controversy there. will the students um, the community or the students haven't had an opportunity to give input on colors yet they've only had an opportunity to give a well, that, input we on mascot yeah, but we, can discuss, we can at least discuss it and discuss what, what we've heard and what we what we like. We don't need to vote on either one of them on the 25th. I'm just asking for a work session on this. Okay. To have some time for the board to My comment, it's gonna be done, yes, but why rush? I mean, 
this is something that we don't have to rush into. I, I feel that's my feelings, and that's some of the people that I have talked with as well. Okay, and Mr. Edwards, you're about to say something. I was. Go for it, Mr. I never say much. No, I, I just uh, I think we should give us a lot of thought. I mean, this is going to be with us for a long time. I mean, a long, long time, and we should really. Uh, I'm like Mr. Ritchie. We need to bear down on this one and make sure we make the right decision. I know we've got a lot of input from a lot of people, but uh, the people that responded, there's still about two-thirds of the county that didn't respond that are already mad about it because they heard about it. So, you know, you, it's hard to win anyway, but let's just slow down just a little bit. Let's Ms. slow down and see if we can get it right. Ms. Bailey? Prior to that uh, discussion, I would like a breakdown of the demographics of who voted for what. Um, so there's a total, right? And then there's a, then we, when we know how many of those were students and how many of those were yeah. community Didn't we get that? members. What, yeah. what, what demographics, uh, Ms. Bailey said demographics. What specifically, are you, um, what I'm, demographics I'm are you looking for? I'm particularly looking for age of the people who took the survey. Because I really am, I, I want this, the kids to own this. And I don't want them to feel like some adults push some name on them. And I, I want them to be pleased with it, and I want it to be something that they can embrace. So you want to add age? I, I want to add it. Well, we already have that. I mean, that's part of what that the survey was. That was part of the was. survey. You had to, you had to, I mean, assuming we that think. the people who did the survey told the truth, <laughs> um, we know that either they're a student or they're a community member, or they're staff. Um, and what was the other one? It was Didn't they send that out already? Did they say which was favored by what? Yes. I've, I've not they, seen they have sent that, but. Uh, I haven't seen the numbers. When the community puts you a community member, you want them to put their age? No. Okay. No. So what age? I'm just assuming that a community member is not a student. Okay. So what? So the students will go in a certain age category. We have that. Yeah. I guess I, maybe I don't really need to know how old they are. I just need to know if they're a student or if they're not. Well. I believe that's part of the survey. They have to list yeah, as a I student. Seen those we just need to discuss. It. We got an email telling us what was number one and, and that, but I want to see the numbers. I want to see the results of the, the survey. The all uh, overall results, I person see the by results person. Of the survey. Yeah. We can see that. And we can we can go that right. back. Okay. I, I, uh, at this point, I can simply say that the Mavericks, when we started this whole process, there was a request of all schools through the art departments and others to have the students included in the selection of some options given the parameters that we've talked about. And the results of the, the first ones were, were, they were student recommendations. And then in the voting, in the first voting, it was pretty clear that the middle and elementary schools were the ones that voted for the Phoenix the first time, and then we came back and, and that's the data you're asking for, is to show all the back to the students and the different ones to be able to see that. And I'll be, we can get you that information and have it available for you before we have the meeting on the 25th. I guess I'm just wondering if there's a difference in the preference between students there and is. community members. It, it is, and some students aren't even participating because you got students K through 12, well, up to 12th grade. A lot of students in your junior class aren't even doing the survey because they're not going to be here. But um, Ms. Bailey would like more data, um, and we can have that on the 25th. Is there any more discussion? Um, I guess I have to put my input in as well, and we can vote this um, up and down, or we can make a motion to the table. Um, there's a, a wide spread of names out there, and, and I can go along with the board on this. As we need more time, but uh, I have a funny suspicion that when we do get more data, it's still going to be a vote that we have to do. And no matter what that vote is, some people aren't going to be happy. But um, we have to um, make a decision based on the best information that we have and move forward. We can't keep delaying. Um, we have a motion, we have a second. Um, we're going to poll the board. One more comment for the discussion. For the discussion. I would certainly hope that seniors would voice their opinion. When they leave the school, it is always going to be on their jackets, in their mind, that they graduated from a particular school and a particular mascot. So even though they may be seniors, 
they still should give their opinion, hopefully, because it's, I can go back to my old high school and I still remember the mascot. And that's going to be the same thing in what in this county. Well, yeah, the school that they're graduating under, and I've talked to some of these kids, you know, they're barons and dragons. They know it's not going to be baron or dragon. So that's why a lot of them aren't participating. They just want whatever the, the outcome is, they're probably going to get behind that. But we're going to vote this up or down if we vote it. I have one, just based on what you said, uh, I'm not concerned about this because I think that that's a bad name or I want the name changed or I have some sort of agenda. I want the process to be right so when people look at what we did, they, they thought that we thought it out well and we might end up with the same name and that's right. fine. That was my objection to the school name. For I didn't mind the, the school name we ended up with, but the process didn't seem right to me and I think it disappointed some people. And I didn't want this process to disappoint people. I wanted them to at least know that we did. We may end up at the same exact place and that's fine with me. And the good part, we have a work session and we can uh, I'm getting a general feel for the board. This is not going to be passed. So let's go. Let's make a motion. We have a motion. We have a second. Let's go ahead and do a roll call. We'll vote it up or down. Uh, if we vote it down, um, we have an opportunity to have further discussion at our work session. I'll do the second. Okay. Um, we, we have a motion and a second. The vote is whether or not we're going to name the school, the mascot, the Mavericks. Yes or Mavericks? No. Which kills it. And then we have more discussion on our work session. Madam Clerk, roll call. No. No. Madam Clerk. Madam Clerk, before we finish this vote, um, because once it's dead, it's dead, um, we can entertain a motion because of the pleasure of the board um, is leaning towards, instead of killing it, um, we can, if we have a motion from the board to delay the vote. Do we have a motion on the board? So moved. We have a motion to have a second. second. We have a second. We have a motion and a second to delay the vote until um, our next meeting on June 25th. Or the, the July. Or, or the July meeting. We have a motion on the floor to delay the vote period. All right? Roll call. So we're voting for the delay. For the delay, yes. So we just don't kill we're it. We're not going to finish. Okay. Yes. <laughs> I think he thinks he's been tricked. <laughs> <laughs> You're a maverick. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 Moving on. The reminders June 25th, special school board meeting, end of year. July 4th, holiday. July 15th, regular school board meeting. July 30th through the 31st, new teacher and employee orientation. That's coming pretty quick. Mm -hmm. Short summary. At this time, as board member remarks, we're going to start to our left. Ms. Bailey. Thank you. Um, I'd just like to uh, once again congratulate all the students who came tonight. But I, I want to give a special thank you to uh, Ms. Bowen and her Game Change in the Air volunteers. Um, I I volunteered at Sheep this past year and they would come once a month on Wednesday afternoons and share with those kids and the light bulbs that came on with some of these students who really don't like school that much but so enjoy that time with their not really peers but other students who would teach them that and I, I there's one young man in particular he will be a programmer one day because of that of, the, of that program and I want to thank Jennifer and Microsoft and anybody else, Gary Cyphers and anybody else who made that program possible. And I'm praying that we get it uh, uh, for another three, 30 years. Um, the other thing, I, I wanted to make the board of, uh, aware that um, effective, because of legislation that was passed this year, effective um, December 31st, we will have to do our COYA training, our conflict of interest training, either online or in person this year. It has to be documented that you finished that training. And it will be offered in person um, at the September 24th the Legislative Advocacy Meeting in Richmond, but there will be online training that you can do to meet that requirement. Also, there was legislation passed that you also have to do online FOIA training, um, and that is not doesn't go into effect until next December. So you'll have to complete that by December 31st of 2020. 
um, if you were in office at that time. And um, there was an another thing that came up during one of the, the sessions that Mr. Jefferson and I went to this uh, program last week, um, and there was a, a strong recommendation from Brad King, who happened to be giving the uh, presentation, that every school board have a basic operating procedures manual in place. And that, that is separate from our policy manual. And this operating procedures manual will be what we call our board norms. But uh, they really stress that these things need to be written down. And um, I would really like to see this board have an operating procedures manual. And um, I'd love for that to be in place, certainly by the end of November, because it looks like we may have some new members on our board come January 1. And I'd like for those new people that are coming on to have something that we could give them or they could reference online to read about how this board operates and, and uh, things that we know because we've kind of been here for a while, but they don't. Because there's nothing to prepare you for sitting on a school board. It's unlike anything else I've ever done because we are not nine people. We are one board that makes decisions together. Um, I did get the name of Wendell Roberts is the school board attorney for Chesterfield County. He's employed by them all the time. And um, he, we don't have to adopt theirs, but he was, he's willing to share theirs with us, at least to give us a template, something that we can look at, something that's already been done, and we can look at it and make it our own. But I, I would love to see this, this board do that. So I'm looking for some direction from the rest of you. Would you like me to contact Mr. Roberts and have him send us that so that we can look at it? Or what, what, what would you, what's the pleasure of the board? Um, probably the pleasure of the board. Um, once we have a full board, hopefully on the 25th, um, we can talk about it then. And then at that point, we'll make a decision which way we're going to go. That way we have the full board here. Thank hopefully. You. Thank you, Ms. Bailey. That's all I have. Mr. Palmer. Uh, yes. I am so proud of our student athlete and other program, uh, other students that participated in different programs here tonight that were recognized. And I also want to throw in that I'm proud of the coaches because not based on that little money that they get, but also the time and effort that they put into it. And uh, you never know how involved or how long their impact on these students are going to last. And so I'm very proud of the coaches as well as our students. Thank you, Mr. Palmer. Mr. Edwards. Mr. Mayor. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Come back on the 25th. <laughs> I, I, just, I just really want to uh, thank Food Services and the Finance Department for bringing up this, uh, the, the, the elementary school meals. This has been a thing we've been looking at for a couple of years, and, and they really dug into it and got it, and it's going to be great for our kids because now we we'll know that when they go to school, they'll have the opportunity to, to eat breakfast and, and have a full day, because a lot of them don't. It's, it's, I, it's, it's terrible, but it, now that'll solve a problem for all of them. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Evans. Mr. Ritchie. I just want to uh, agree with Mr. Palmer about uh, coaches and the, the important uh, uh, place they hold in, at our schools and in the kids' lives. Coach Green, who spent his whole career doing that, I saw a uh, Hall of Fame speech by uh, Steve Largent. He was a Seattle Seahawk. Mm -hmm. And then his, his father ran out on him. And he said it left a huge hole. And he said that coaches filled that hole for him and it made all the difference in his life. And if somebody doesn't step into that spot, the wrong person will step into that spot. Mm -hmm. So when we pick good coaches, and I'm thinking of Coach Green because he's retiring, they, they can often be that surrogate uh, father and the, the kids look to them to look to their coach as their male role model and it was interesting to hear him uh, speak to that at, at the Hall of Fame speech because it was almost like he was a little kid again you could tell when he talked about his dad leaving him and what a hole that left in his life as a young boy so I agree with Mr. Palmer and uh, I think we have some really great coaches here and I appreciate the work they do we all know they work more hours than uh, any kind of stipend would ever pay for it. thank you thank you Mr. Richie. Mr. Johnson I want to say I, I was sitting here tonight when he was introducing all the athletes and back when I was in high school I threw the shot put a disc and they hit a girl here tonight throwing the shot put and I thought that was pretty amazing it wasn't like that when I come through school um, these athletes these young boys they're very impressive uh, with, from what it used to be when I was in school 
and I'm very thankful for that because I can tell you, uh, as a police officer, and I've always taught my kids and I've taught my grandkids, you keep them involved in sports and in things in school, they'll stay off the street. And that's very true. That's all I like to say. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Thank you, sir. All right. Um, I would like to congratulate um, uh, Mr. Dixon um, for being the new principal at Parkview Middle School. <laughs> I didn't know I had to give a speech tonight. Um, but thank you all for entrusting me with Parkview Middle School. I hope that I do you all very proud. It's um, very hard for me to leave my team at South Hill Elementary. Um, these two long but short years, um, we've grown very close. And of course, with the children and my admin team, um, it, it's tough, but opportunity knocks and have to answer. And hopefully, like I said, I'll do you all proud and do a good job of part of you middle. Thank you, Mr. Dixon. Thank you. Thank you. And I want to thank all the other administrators for the hard work that you're doing. Um, keep up the good work. Um, we're moving. We're moving in a positive direction. If there's nothing more from the pleasure of the board, get a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second.